Okay, good morning. I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's eight o'clock. This is the Judicial and Public Safety Committee. Here. Good morning. Um, let's say, let's see. Can we get a roll call, please? Chair Evans. Here. Member Chaplin. Here. Member Childress. Here. Member Desart. Here. Member Eckhoff. Member Gustin. Here. Member Kajewski. Member Ozog. Here. Member Schwartz. Here. Member Torrentor. Member Yu. Member Zay. Thank you. We have a quorum. Um, do we have any public comments today? No. Okay, no public comments today. Uh, so for my chair remarks, um, last Friday, parts of the Midwest experienced multiple extreme weather events. There were many casualties and parts of Illinois suffered large scale damages. On April 1st, Governor J.B. Pritzker issued a disaster declaration for counties struck by a series of tornadoes throughout the state of Illinois. In response to, a dam to damage that occurred during a tornado in Addison, Chair Deb Conroy issued a disaster proclamation for DuPage County. This proclamation will help the county procure items for, or services necessary to assist the community storm damage. As always, the DuPage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management was fully staffed and prepared to respond to Friday's weather forecast. I want to thank OHE's OHSEM Director Craig Diekman for his continued leadership and our county staff and community partners for working together to monitor the situation. I know I sleep better knowing at night knowing that they are on the job. And uh, as Joan Olson pointed out, the damage assessment is already done and we are good to go. So good, good job to everyone on staff, everyone at OHSEM and Craig Diekman. And next item for... I want everybody to know about merit. Uh, at the next JPS meeting on April 18th, we will be treated to a merit presentation given by Westmont Police Chief Jim Gunther. Merit is the Metropolitan Emergency Response and Investigations Team, which is a countywide task force of highly skilled law enforcement professionals who work together to respond to major crimes and critical incidents. After the presentation, I will also present the members of Merit with a certificate of appreciation on behalf of Chair Conroy to recognize Merit's contributions towards enhancing the quality of life for DuPage County residents. So stay tuned for that. And today I would like to have Michael Childress, member Michael Childress, say a few words. Thank you, Madam Chair. Today I'm rising to request a moment of silence. Today is the 55th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King. So we're asking for just a quick moment of silence before we go into business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Member Childress. Okay, so let's go on to the approval of minutes. Can I get a motion to so approve moved. the meeting minutes from Tuesday, March 21st, 2023? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Budget transfers. <clears throat> Can I get a motion to approve item 23-1293, transfer of funds from other professional services to IT equipment small, small value, printing and software licenses in the amount of $2,050 needed to reclass grant so categories to reflect the budget rev revisions approved by the county board and state agency. All approved? Uh, uh, oh, any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, can I get a motion to approve item 23-1294, transfer of funds from accounts, uh, other professional services to lease right of use asset in the amount of $19,001 needed for the purchase of six Axon fleet in-car camera systems not budgeted for? Um, uh, any discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Okay. The motion carries. Uh, can I get an item to approve 23-1295, the transfer of funds from accounts employer share IMRF, 
other professional service and other professional services to regular salaries, employer share social security, and employee medical and hospital insurance in the amount of $27,400 to, needed to realign grant budget to account for anticipated future payroll expenses, which increases due to COLA and merit increases. Any discussion on this? Okay, all in favor? Okay, the motion carries. Let's move on to procurement requ uh, requisitions. Can I get a motion to approve JPSP 005123, recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order for Axon Enterprises for the purchase of six Axon fleet in-car camera systems for the period of May 1st, 2023 through April 30th, 2028, for a contract total not, amount not to exceed $95,000. Okay, any discussion on this? Okay, uh, Member Ozong. I have a question about this. Above, it says when we approve the budget transfer, it says uh, lease right of use asset. And then here it says purchase order. Do we own or lease these items or these cameras? I'm going to let Jason Bubathal answer. Uh, Deputy Chief Billadu is on Zoom and he can answer that question, but I can supplement anything we need. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is much like the body-worn cameras uh, with Axon. What they do is they lease them for a period of five years, and at the end of that five years, they come in and refresh them if you renew the lease. So that way, your equipment is never more than five years old. Okay, so it's basically a lease, but thank you. Okay, and oh, uh, Member Chaplin? Yeah, just out of curiosity, too, um, why weren't these in the budget? Why, how did we... Um not put these in the budget. So to make a long story short, we're currently using Motorola's watch guard system. And many of those are starting to age out and not they're not going to be able to be fixed or replaced without extending that purchase. So what we were looking to do with this six is an initial trial run because these would then tie into the body-worn cameras. They would tie into the uh, taser devices, the taser seven devices. So all of our evidence would be in one location so with the, the sun setting, for lack of a better term, of the equipment that we have with the watch guards right now, we wanted to just try these, see if this was a more effective and more efficient way to get all of our evidence combined into one area as opposed to having it parted out into two different systems. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. The motion carries. Uh, let's move on to action items. Uh, JPS CO0003 23 recommend can I get a motion to approve JPS CO 003 recommendation for the approval of a change order amending purchase order uh 618301 serve issued to Bond Dixon and Associates to provide continuing legal services as special assistant states attorneys to increase the purchase order in the amount of 100,000 resulting in an amended purchase order total amount not to exceed $200,000. Um, is there any discussion? Oh wait, was there a motion and a second? No, second, okay. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Member Gustin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I read through all of the packet and this one kind of uh, jumped out at me and I was curious as to what the expense was for. Uh, so dug into it, there's three lawsuits that are pending. Um, and so this is actually a budget item and an item for like a third party outside counsel. So it's not necessarily our um, state's attorney's office, although they do monitor it, but they're not handling it, um, I believe through due to conflict of interest and or I'll let you explain it because you'll do far better than I will on I don't it. Know where that, but where the expense came from, also. <laughs> so basically, the state's attorney's office is listed on this because they have appointed Bond Dixon as a special assistant state's attorney to represent the clerk's office. So, what they're doing, um, and just so you know, too, the initial um, expenditure has not yet been depleted, but we're coming back here before we get to that point. Um, and just to give you a little bit about what they're doing, as Member Gustin mentioned, uh, there were three elect election lawsuits um, that have been pending for a while, some newer, uh, one going back to 21. In addition, this year, there were 13 ballot challenges, which 
the, the uh, county clerk needs representation on as well. And then there's just various election matters that Von Dixon handles, whether it's polling. Uh, there's been a lot of issue with polling places this year. Um, there's FOIA questions related to some of the pending lawsuits. Um, those are the types of matters that Von Dixon hires or handles generally. So, um, and just to give you a little bit of history, uh, since I think we discussed this last night, Von Dixon does have an expertise in this area and they have represented uh, the election commission even prior to them being, the responsibilities being assumed by the county clerk. So I guess our conversation is, should this actually be a state's attorney office uh, identifier or should it be a clerk's office identifier so we have clear transparency as to what this expense is related to because we I'm sure there's multiple types of cases uh, that maybe the state's attorney great, does or does not handle. Great question. So uh, budgetarily, uh, regardless of a special counsel or anything like that, it comes out of the state's attorney's office budget, right? And no, it's actually oh, charged. we are charging it. Good. Um, but because the state's attorney himself has the authority to make that appointment for special knowledge, that's how we've always tagged it. That doesn't mean it's not something we can't re-clarify. Um, has it always been done that way? The state's attorney is the authorized legal representative. Um, so if there's somebody, if there's a specialized knowledge that's needed, um, they have to appoint someone as a special state's sure. attorney. There can't be just an attorney privately representing the county. Sure. And has it always been done this way then? It's always gone under I, I the state's attorney? I think it would be noted that it was a clerk's office, but I think it's clerk's noted office. now that it's our office because we're appointing the yeah. special okay. assistant. And I can't let you know, the, the identifiers on the JPS uh, that has occurred about two years ago is when we started actually doing it by department specifically. Just a few months ago, actually. Uh, well, State attorney, yes, sorry. I'm talking for like uh, 18th Judicial Circuit. We, we started putting on that about two years ago. Um, so that was at the direction of the chair. At this the time. issue, these types of cases were eight, two months ago under the clerk's office. I run fire for more yeah. clarity so you kind of know because the, you know, the state's attorney's office has a lot of cases. Um, and this one is coming out of a department that, you know, yes, it'll is, be, it'll it's important for clerk's transparency clerk's. purposes, in my opinion. Um, and I don't know what the other members of our, of our board think, but for me, I like to have things clear. So when I'm looking at something, even as a layman, I know exactly what this is about, uh, or at least know which direction to go. And I was totally lost. So thank you so much, staff, on this. I don't know if the other members have any comments or. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, member Chaplin and then member Ozog. Okay, so um, my understanding is that <clears throat> the state attorney's office doesn't have an attorney that specializes in election law. If they did, we wouldn't have to hire outside legal counsel. That's how it's been explained to me in the past. And I believe they've always represented the election commission as well as um, our clerk's office. Bob Dixon. Yes. 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 yes right. That's yes. So they've been they've been helping us out for years, and um, so because of that fact that we don't have a special state's attorney that is um, an election lawyer or has that specialty, that's why the state's attorney has to bring in outside counsel. We bring in outside counsel for a lot of different um, expertise. We for expertise. We, for expertise, yes. right? And and. Um, from what I remember, it's always been uh, uh, from the state's attorney's office because the clerk can't go out and hire her own lawyer. We have to have the state's attorney hire the lawyer. So that's why it's coming out of the state's attorney's account, if that's my understanding. If that makes it a little more clear, because we don't have a, that expertise in our state's attorney's office. I think just for clarity, the state's attorney does appoint the special assistant when yes. there is a certain expertise required. It's my understanding that this will come from account 1180, which I think that's right. a different, that's not the state's attorney's budget. So it, right, but the state's right. attorney hires the special counsel. Correct. Right. So that's why we're we, bringing out of that. He appoints, the state's attorney appoints a special assistant to do whatever the specialized area of work is that's required. Right. And I could just tell you, I watched the petition challenges, the 13, um, <laughs> this past season. And it was a lot there. Were, I mean, it was at several weeks of hours of um, debate. So 
Pat Bond was there a long time for those just petition challenges. Thank you, uh, Member Ozog. Thank you. Anecdotally, are we actually seeing a lot more of these challenges over the last three? Two I would have to say cycles? yes. And it is election day today, too. Yes. So, how, how appropriate. Uh, but even for consolidated versus general, we're seeing a lot more of these. We're seeing ballot challenges as well as just election litigation, which we, you know, I think that has increased over the last few years. Okay. So the 100% increase over what you're looking for. And I mean, it's, this, again, this is not to exceed, so it's not Right, and it's still less than last year's, but we're coming in now, and we haven't depleted the initial grant, but we're coming in before we would get to that point. Thank you. Chair. Thank you, Member Zay, and then Member Gustin again. Thank you, Madam Chair. As Member Ozak said, these are continually, maybe next year we should put additional money into the budget for this. If it's going to continue, I'd rather put extra money in the budget and not use it, then have these increases. It's just the 100% increase kind of just looks, doesn't look the best. So maybe we can, you know, add that to the next, no, I appreciate next that. year's budget. And we can definitely look at that. I think we try to be conservative and not ask for an overly large amount and monitor. We do monitor, I should mention too, um, our office gets the monthly billing and we monitor those billings as things are going along. So we are watching out for that. But yes, I mean, we can kind of maybe take a look at the last few years and give you a more accurate amount. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Madam, uh, Member Gustin. Uh, thank you very much. And, and having the money coming out of the clerk's budget is important to know, um, even though you're kind of the conduit because it's a legal uh, issue. I'm wondering if um, the board would be okay if we do state's attorney's office slash clerk's office. So at least it's transparent and we kind of know Hey, these two are working together, and this is this is what it is. Yeah. Heads up! You yeah, know. the items can have whatever the it's at the direction of the chair of the committee. So whatever the chair would have. So if, if you chair, chair Evans moment. would like to, we can chair do that moving forward. Yeah, I would say moving forward, but yeah. I think we can okay. keep this as it is. So that's that's perfect. Let, with that. Jeff, uh, just let me clarify the budget. Um, so it, you'll see account 11 or department or accounting unit 1180. All of our special attorneys, labor attorneys throughout the county who do representation come out of this one account. And we do that because in the budget, we can see how much in total is spent on outside counsel for, you know, all different types of cases. So during the budget process, if we would charge, let's say, Bond Dixon, the clerk, and then, um, you know, our, our labor uh, attorneys to all these different departments, you'd have charges that are in each department, and it would be hard to get a total. So if, you know, if the price needed to go up or whatnot, um, you know, you'd have different um, increases to the budget for all these different accounting units. So that's why we use one holding account. This 1180 account or, or uh, accounting unit instead of charging each other's departments. And so the 1180 account is for any outside work that needs to be done outside of an employee for this. For yeah, the basically county. all those legal fees. Okay. And so there's really no way to kind of identify what that money has been used for what would you recommend to make it more transparent? I don't have a problem with the money at all. What I have a problem with is clarity within what we're doing here. And so if it's a state's attorney's office working with the, you know, with the clerk's office, why don't we just say that? Well, and we can so, do that on the agenda, okay, on the agenda language. On, on the, and I'm just yeah. looking at it from a public perspective. I totally get the accounting stuff. It's in yeah. category and don't ever mix the two. Right. But for a common person sure. or somebody who's going to be looking at this, they're going to assume one thing. And so I right. think it's important to be transparent. Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. Um, any more discussion? Okay, great. Um, so let's... Uh, Let's take a vote on this. Um, I'll, oh, wait, motion to second it. Okay, well, uh, all in favor. Okay, any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Let's move on. Any old business? Any new business? 
Okay, motion to adjourn. Okay, uh, all in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you.